<laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dan and welcome back to my kitchen for another unboxing and review video. I'm feeling quite claustrophobic today. I'm going to be looking at the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS Turbo Resin 3D Printer. Yeah. However, I'm not only going to be showing the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS Turbo Resin 3D Printer, I also got the wash and cure station as well as some resins to test out. Without further ado, let's dive in. <laughs> Alrighty, so everything is unboxed. I have the resin printer, the curing station, washing station, and then six resin bottles. They are two ash gray, two volcanic gray, and then two pale purples. I'm gonna go ahead and move everything over to the print room and uh, get started. Once everything was unboxed, setup was surprisingly simple. I powered on the printer and ran through the setup instructions such as the Wi-Fi, calibration, and leveling procedures. The final step was to load the autofill resin container of my Hay Gears Ash Gray PAP10 resin, and that was pretty much it for the physical setup. The wash and cure stations were also connected to Wi-Fi. All three devices were linked through the Hay Gears Blueprint app. The app is basically a control hub that lets you monitor all your devices while the slicer itself runs on your computer. Once your devices are connected, they're basically ready to go. I also updated the firmware on all three machines to the latest one available. This was done over the air as they were all connected to my Wi-Fi. I downloaded the Slicer software directly from the Hay Gears website. After installing, I logged into my profile and all the devices I had just connected on my phone instantly showed up. There was no weird pairing steps and I didn't have to fight with the software. Everything was ready to print. It was now time for the first test of the printer and the PAP10 resin. This is their high precision detail resin designed for miniatures and super fine features. In the slicer, I went to new project, chose cloud project, selected the Reflex RS Turbo, no add-ons, I picked the resin, and then set the layer thickness to 30 microns. Then I dropped in the calibration matrix file and hit one click slice. This automatically oriented the part, added supports, and sliced the model. The entire process only took about a minute and then it sent the file straight to the printer. Under sliced files, I also sent the same file to the wash and cure station. And then I hit start on the printer. About two and a half hours later, the print came out looking incredible. The part popped off the build plate super easily and I didn't even scratch the bed with the scraper. After that, I filled the wash station with two bottles of 91% IPA. I dropped the part in and then sealed the lid tightly and placed it on the station. The wash shook violently and only took two minutes. I then placed the full tank onto the empty tank and opened the ball valve on the bottom to drain the IPA out. After removing the part and wiping off the excess IPA, I was able to easily and cleanly snap off the supports. I can't even begin to describe how incredible this part looks in person. Lastly, I put the part into the curing station that was preset for 30 minutes. The final results were insane. The part was paper thin, flexible, and had zero visible layer lines. The level of detail absolutely blew me away. Chef's kiss. Using files I found over on printables, I 3D printed a small drip mount mod on my FDM printer that attaches directly to the build plate. It bolts directly into the pre-tapped holes on the side of the build plate mount and lets the plate sit at an angle after printing so the extra resin will drip right back into the vat. It was a super simple print, but extremely useful. For the second test, I printed these incredibly tiny slabs with microscopic text on them. Stuff that's hard to read even when you're holding it right in front of your face. I sliced all four of the plates on the blueprint slicer and then exported them to the included flash drive. After importing the files onto the printer, I clicked print. The printing took just over two hours. I took the build plate off and then used the drip mod to drip excess resin back into the vat. Using my scraper, I popped the parts off with ease. You can see the tiny text is clearly visible. I put the parts directly into the part washer and cleaned them off. And the printer absolutely nailed it. No failures, no distortion, nothing. However, after I took them out of the curing station, I realized I was a little too aggressive during the support removal. I was pressing down on the text with my thumb and managed to smudge the text on the slabs, which was definitely my fault. But even with that, it still shows just how insane the detail is on these. After the two test prints went swimmingly, I wanted to see if I could push the limits with this printer. With anime. So I went straight into a large miniature print, a Chainsaw Man statue. I loaded all of these parts into the slicer. For most of the parts, I hauled them out so they'd be a 3mm shell. I also added drainage holes so that uncured resin wouldn't get trapped inside. This can all be done on the slicer and it makes the entire process super simple. After adding supports to all the parts, I sliced it and then sent everything to the printer, wash, and cure station. Fun fact, I did mess up here and I accidentally punched a drainage hole straight through his chest, but it was late. 
I was tired and I wanted a little figure and future Dan would have to deal with it. But honestly, he's a demon covered in blood, so it'll just get hidden in post-processing. The total print time was about eight hours and the results look amazing. I printed the torso, arms, and head on a single plate and it popped off super easily. I then threw them into the wash station. Before removing the supports, you can see how clean all the parts look. The model itself isn't highly textured, but the printer still shows the super smooth surfaces. I just want to say, when you're cleaning the parts and you open up the ball valve, make sure the ball valve on the bottom one is closed. I just dumped 64 ounces of IPA all over the table because I wasn't paying attention. But my table and hardwood floors are super clean, but it smells awful in here right now. I filled a can full of hot water which helps pop the supports off much easier and reduce the dimpling from the support attachment points. I could remove them with just my fingers but I needed my snippers to get the tiny supports in the hard to reach areas. I then put all the parts into the cure station and started printing the base. And just like the other print, it came out amazing. The size and detail of the rock base was very impressive. I then washed and cured it as well. All in all, for the third and fourth print, this came out fantastic. It looks extremely smooth and will only require a little bit of cleanup to remove all the small blemishes from the supports. There were zero failures, no delamination, no weird warping, everything printed perfectly. The level of detail and surface finish at that scale was shocking. I'm so impressed with how this worked, and it's honestly incredible just to see how easy it is to make these miniatures real. Next, I tested something completely different. Since Hagear sent me two other resins, I decided to use the PAF10 Flexible Production Resin. This resin is a durable, flexible, PVC-like material with high breakage resistance. I began by 3D printing this screw-on filter holder I found over on Thingiverse. This easily screws onto the bottle, and I used a paint filter to filter the unused resin right back into the bottle. I drained and cleaned the vat, swapped out the resin bottles, and the whole process took maybe five minutes. Once everything was set, I had to update the slicer settings to match the new resin in the printer. After that was changed, I tested out the calibration matrix again, and this time I threw four of them onto the slicer to test consistency. I then used the one slice button to automatically do everything for me. After it was sent to the machines, I clicked start and it began to print. In just over three hours, it printed perfectly. The parts popped off the build plate just as easily as the other prints. After giving it a good wash, removing the supports, and then curing it, the parts came out super clean, and you could see the light passing through them because of how thin they were. They were insanely flexible too. You could almost bend them in half. And just for reference, you can see the difference here. In my left hand is the PAP10 calibration matrix, and you can see that it flexes a little bit, whereas the PAF10 bends like rubber. I wanted to print a very detailed miniature with this resin, so I chose this John Wick statue. I did the regular slicer routine and started the print on the printer. At this point, I trusted the machine completely. I could press start, walk away, and I knew it was going to work. The print came out gorgeous. The supports popped off easily, and it was really cool to see how the katana was basically floating in the middle of the air. It's also really cool to see his tiny hand with a flexible rosary hanging from it. I spent a little bit of time removing the tiny support pieces from the model and then assembled it all together. The flexibility and the level of detail that this resin can achieve is insane to me. I was extremely impressed with it. Hagears also sent me a pulsing release resin tank, so I swapped that in next. Since I was already changing resins, it was the perfect time to do so. The pulsing release tank is a two-in-one resin tank that combines both the automatic heating function and the pulsing release function when used in combination with the pulsing release module. However, because I don't have that, I'm just using it for the automatic heating function alone. I cleaned the vat and the build plate and then removed them from the printer so that I could install the sensor and cable into the back of the printer using the included screws. I then dropped in the new tank and screwed it down and it was ready to go. Next, I poured in the PAS10 resin. This resin is more of a medium medium viscosity and designed for strength and durability with a matte finish. I originally planned to print another calibration matrix, but I got a little bit too excited and went straight for another statue. This time I printed an Asterion figure from Baldur's Gate 3. I managed to cram every single part onto a build plate and it was completely packed. After slicing, I sent it to the printer and when I woke up the next morning, it had printed flawlessly. There was no warping, the supports were perfect, and nothing failed. It is insane how clean this thing can print. I had to spend a little bit of time cleaning up the parts, but everything fit together snugly with no issues. The tolerances were dead on. However, I did have to use some tape to hold it together. It was printed at 30 microns and every single detail is on it. I was absolutely blown away by this model because of how precise everything was. It's time for my thoughts on the 3D printer. Honestly, I love it. And I'm being serious when I say it because every part of this machine has been incredible and it has been nothing but a joy to work with. And for the entire time of printing on all of these units, I have had literally zero issues. It's just a very well-rounded machine combo because it's extremely simple to set up, the pairing was quick and easy, and even the resin swapping system was super cool and really well designed. 
The slicer did take a minute to get used to, but after I printed for the first time, I felt pretty comfortable with it. Overall, all three of these machines feel really well designed and that they're built for repeated use. Every single part that I've printed on the Reflex Turbo has come out looking incredible. Funny enough, I think my favorite thing about the printer is how easy it is that the parts pop off the build plate. I don't have to sit there and scrape or hack at the part, it simply just pops directly off. The supports also come off really clean and easy. The price for just the resin printer alone is $849, whereas the combo is $1,846. Now that is a little bit higher than other printers on the market, however I think it's justified because of the repeatability, the consistency, and the accuracy of all the prints I've got off this printer. And it's not just the printer, because the resins that I got with this machine were also great. They do have different use cases, but they all met the same exact description that they said they would. I definitely recommend this printer and the combo for anyone that's looking for a resin printer. This thing has been nothing but a blast for me to work with. I do want to say thank you to Hey Gears for sending me out this printer setup, because I will be genuinely using this for years. I'll see you in the next one.